Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We got a big weekend of uh, racing, and it's not just at Saratoga. I'll be at Monmouth Park this weekend. Opening weekend at Del Mar, Matt. Don't forget about that. But yeah, you're on the Jersey Shore, my old neck of the woods down there in uh, in the beautiful Garden State, Matt. It's it's Haskell Day, of course, the big day of the year at Monmouth Park. They have a really nice card, several graded stakes, but the big one. Of course, Matt, is the Haskell. You ready to jump right in? Yeah, let's go. All right. here. Well, here's the feel for the Haskell, Matt. We saw a little bit of a surprise when the morning line maker at Monmouth Park decided to make the two. Taiba, a slight favorite over undefeated Jack Christopher. Uh, I don't think it will happen. Maybe maybe they're thinking that baffert uh, is due to win the haskell for what would it be his 10th haskell win Matt? yeah it'll it would be his 10th and i guess that's what you know uh making taiba the favorite uh, is all about the fact that baffert has had such a stranglehold over the uh haskell in in you know in recent years but i i just don't see it the long layoff uh, um lightly raced and you're talking about uh you're talking about the connections of uh chad brown jose ortiz on board uh jack christopher undefeated uh uh and and you know brilliant performances in all four races uh people love undefeated horses betting chad brown and ortiz yeah i think taiba is going to be the favorite but who knows you never know for sure, but I, I'm with you, Matt. Uh, yeah, uh, Jose Ortiz will be jumping on Jack Christopher for the fifth straight time. Jack Christopher's looked absolutely terrific in his four races, uh, none better than his last at seven furlongs at Belmont Park. But that was seven furlongs. He's never been beyond a mile. He's never been two turns before. So this will be the test where he goes in a grade one, mile and eighth race, two turns at Monmouth Park against a decent field. Matt, uh, I guess the question for Jack Christopher is, is he going to get nine furlongs? Is he going to get nine uh, nine furlongs, two turns at Monmouth Park against uh, three horses who ran in the Kentucky Derby and, and all have won pretty big races on their own? Yeah, they're right. Exactly, Brian. There are three other horses in the field that are grade one winners and, and, and legitimate recent grade one winners uh, on the Kentucky Derby Trail, they they are good horses. And I think, you know, seeing Jack Christopher in the Haskell uh, is, is a decision that uh, Chad Brown, based on the fact that, hey, Monmouth Park is the right kind of track for Jack Christopher to try going two turns for the first time. And let me just add a little bit more. We're talking about the odds. Um, Brian at Monmouth Park, uh, of course, there are fixed odds wagered where you can make a bet and lock in the lock in the odds at that time, regardless of what happens with the paramutual wagering. In the fixed odd wagers, um, I think beginning today, Jack Christopher is going to be listed as even money, and Tyba is going to be listed as five to two. Yeah, that, that's interesting, Matt, and that uh, that kind of jives a little bit more with what I was thinking as far as how these horses will be bet. Uh, Jack Christopher deserves to be the favorite despite not ha having been two turns. I agree with you that Monmouth Park, nine furlongs in the Haskell, as it's shown to be in previous editions of the Haskell, we've been watching this race, Matt, for, for four decades plus, the two of us. And uh, yeah, this is a good spot for a horse who might be a miler at their very best, a mile and 16th, to get that two turn distance of nine for a long. It does strike me though, that this is a race where basically I think there's five horses who have a shot in here. I, I, I don't really look at the three long shots. I'm speaking of Benavengo and uh, one time Willard and King of Hollywood. I, I don't really think those long shots are horses that 
could potentially win the Haskell. You know, weird things can happen, but uh, I, I see it as a five horse race. And it, it looks like, you know, Howling Time probably has the most speed of those five. Uh, maybe the one of the long shots could show a little early speed as well. But uh, the the four favorites, I'm including now Cyber Knife and White Abario on this list. The four favorites all kind of have very similar running styles in that they like to stalk the pace. And uh, it, it, it should make for an interesting rider race. It should make for an interesting um, uh, seeing how they come out of the turn in Monmouth Park. Because if 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 Jack Christopher and Taiba and White Abario and Cyberknife all want to be stalking the pace, what's that going to look like when the real running starts about a quarter mile from the finish line? Yeah, Brian, that, that's a really good point and, and uh, a, a good pace analysis of what might happen in the uh, uh, in the Haskell. Um, you know, we'll see who's on their game. Frankly, Brian, I think that if Jack Christopher can get the distance, um, they're all running for second and third place. Right. I, I, I can't disagree with you there, Matt. I think the best horse, the most exciting horse. And, and I think, just, like I said, I, his last race was so impressive at Belmont Park in the in the Woody Stevens. Um, he, he's facing his toughest test yet, and he's also facing two turns. So if he is closer to even money, as we kind of expect him to be, you know, it, it makes sense that you would take a shot against him. But I agree with you, Jack Christopher is the horse to beat in here. Let's talk a little bit more about Taiba though. Taiba, an interesting horse to say the least. Uh, he changed, changed hands uh, of Barnes and trainers, uh, forced uh, that to happen with the, the suspension of Baffert. Now he's back with Baffert after running for, t uh, running for Tim Yachtin in the Kentucky Derby. I also wanna say the Kentucky Derby is a race for a lot of horses that I think we could almost draw a line through, Matt, in that it was such a crazy pace. And that probably hurt the chances of Cyber, Knife, Taiba, and White Abargo. They were all uh, wanting to lay pretty close to that lead, and they probably all had rougher trips than they will ever have in their careers. So for that reason, I wouldn't hold it against him. But Taiba's only run three times. He hasn't run since the Kentucky Derby. So impressive winning the Santa Anita Derby in his second career start. Uh, he's got some fast works out in California. But if you look at those works, as I have, I, I, I don't know. It, it almost looks like he was being pushed pretty hard in those workouts. Baffert wanted fast workouts, I guess, to get him ready for this hassle. Will he be ready? Is he, is he a real legitimate threat to Jack Christopher? Yeah, and it's interesting you brought up about those workouts. I was going to do the same, Brian, and say that, you know, a, a handicapper who I view as one of the best handicappers in the country uh, commented. Well, thank just, you, Matt. I, I appreciate that. I... Well, you you and another, he also commented, Brian, about the workouts for Taiba in, in that. And knowing that Taiba has never been one of those horses that loves to train in the morning, um, also noted that um, he really had to be asked hard to produce those fast workouts, um, a lot more than was the case when he was training earlier in the year on the on the Derby Trail. Uh, do I think that Tybe is going to run badly uh, in the Haskell? No, no, I, I don't, Brian. But. Um, you know, I, I think it maybe bodes a little bit about what to expect from him off of a long layoff from the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough spot for Tyba. I know Baffert's won this nine uh, race nine times, as we mentioned before, but it's a difficult spot. There are good horses in here besides Jack Christopher. And running in the Kentucky Derby, having that tough experience in the Kentucky Derby and only your third career start, uh, there, there's reason to believe that would take something out of him whether it be mentally or physically. Uh, the workouts on paper look good. I, I, I guess myself and others didn't think they looked as good watching the video of them. Uh, I, I, you know, I wasn't on tie, but you weren't on tie, but going into the Kentucky Derby at the odds here, especially the morning line odds, I, I don't think I can be on tie, but here you got to respect Baffert. You got to respect the horse who won the Santa Anita Derby in his second career start. But, uh, there's others to look at. Let's talk about them a little bit. Cyberknife, Matt, uh, 
a horse who has a lot of talent for trainer Brad Cox. A lot of people were waiting for him to break through, and he did. He won a very nice allowance race at Fairgrounds before winning the grade one Arkansas Derby, beating a favorite of mine, uh, Secret Oath, as well as Barber Road down there at Oaklawn Park. And uh, his return race may have been tougher than expected, but on the other hand, I think it was a very good performance what he did when winning the Matt win at Churchill Downs. Yeah, like so many other horses, Brian, that have come back and raced out of the Kentucky Derby, they've come back and run well. And 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 Cyberknife did that also in the Matt Wynn. Um, he, you mentioned that stalking running style. Uh, um, Cyberknife was using that and and battled down, battled uh, you know down the stretch and got up to win by a nose. Would it have been nice to have seen a more uh, uh, impressive margin of victory. Sure, it would have, but it was also good to see him win a battle down the stretch. Yeah, and and, and I, I will um, I will caution people looking at that nose victory and kind of saying, oh, it wasn't a good performance because I, I think Howling Time has run a couple of really nice races at Churchill Downs recently, and uh, you know he had to run down Howling Time, and Howling Time was not coming back in any shape or form in that Matt Win. So for Cyberknife to nail him in a, in a in a really heart pounding finish there in the Matt Win, that was a good performance. If Cyberknife can move forward, I think he is a very dangerous, interesting horse in here. Uh, on the other hand, I, I don't know that I love the rail, but on the other hand, he did move uh, pretty well between horses, inside horses in the Arkansas Derby, something to remember. Now, the horse he beat in that Matt Wynn Howling Time will be the long shot of the five horses that I said have a shot here in the Haskell. He'll be the clear long shot of the five, and he looks to be the most speedy of the five. Um, look to have some talent as a two-year-old, but for whatever reason did not show up in, in more than a, a race or two in the middle of his career so far. But then the last two at Churchill Downs were really good. Maybe he's dangerous if the other four are all looking at each other and Howling Time is somewhat loose on the lead. Yeah, maybe. And, you know, he, he's worth considering. Clearly, Dale Romans has got him back on his game back in his best form, which seems to happen at Churchill Downs, Brian Zipsy. Those first two races that we talked about in his career were uh, uh, victories, and they were at Churchill Downs, and then now back at Churchill Downs. Again, a very nice allowance win, and that race and that performance in the Matt win certainly is noteworthy. Right. If, if he's uh, if he's upwards of 15 to one and here's something, a horse to consider for your exotics. I, I honestly I do like him fifth best of the five, but I think the odds will be much, much higher on him. Uh, he'll have to show it, as Matt said, away from Churchill Downs, though, on Saturday. And then finally, we come to White of Barrio, Matt, who's the winner of the grade one Florida Derby. And if you look at the Florida Derby, if you look at the Florida Derby, I know it's a, a few starts back now for the son of race day trained by Safi Joseph, but he was a little bit farther off the lead and he made his move and he was able to, to, to make that sharp move and, and kind of take over the race and look like nine furlongs was right up his alley. Uh, the Derby was tough for a lot of reasons, tough trip, tough paces. I've already talked about. He was beaten to the punch. Uh, and I, I might be saying that uh, backwards because Tawny Port was behind him in the Ohio Derby early, but Tawny Port made such a big move on the turn that he he, he looked like he was going to blow right by White of Barrio. And, and sure enough, he beat him. But uh, not a, again, not a bad return race for White of Barrio that might set him up for the race they've really been pointing for, the Haskell. Yeah, again, and, we, and we're, here we are talking about that first race back from the Kentucky Derby often being a good one and that was the case with uh white barrio and you mentioned the florida derby being a good race and it, and, and you got and you got to keep going back to it because uh charge it who ran so well in the florida derby came back and had that dynamic win in the dwyer just recently so you know it, it keeps coming back and looking like an even better race but we have to say it about white of barrio um he still is seeking his first victory away from gulfstream park yeah yeah i picked him in the ohio derby but uh, you're right uh four four career wins all at gulfstream park 
All right, Matt, that's our Haskell preview. I, I think it's a very interesting race because we want to find out. We really want to find out. This is a horse that Chad Brown has compared a little bit to, to Go Zapper, and that's, uh, of course, uh, a high compliment to the young son of money. So we want to see if he can get two turns. And he's got some serious competition here as he tries two turns for the first time in the Haskell. Moving up the coast a bit, uh, moving up to Saratoga. We we're always talking about Saratoga this time of year, Matt. Uh, there is uh, another good weekend of racing at Saratoga. The, the, the Lake George is on Friday. There's a nice uh, Philly and Mare sprint called uh, the, the Caressing. Is it the Caressing? The Caressing on, uh, yeah. on Saturday. Uh, but uh, the, the Coaching Club American Oaks is a race that we highlighted as one of the races we're looking forward to at Saratoga. And of course, the reason why I think is the two leading three-year-old fillies, two very, very classy three-year-old fillies, Nest and Secret Oath, have both landed in the Coaching Club American Oaks, coming out of triple crown races against the boys, and two starts removed from running one-two in a 14-horse field in the Kentucky Oaks. They meet for the second time on Saturday in the grade one Coaching Club American Oaks. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's what makes it interesting, Brian. They're meeting for the second time. And uh, they met before in the Kentucky Oaks with Secret Oath coming out on top. And Nest was second in that big race. And, then, and, and it is really interesting that they both opted to run in a triple crown race against the boys. Secret Oath, of course, went into the Preakness and finished fourth. And Nest went into the Belmont Stakes for Todd Pletcher and finished second. Yeah, and that was a big second place finish for Nest. And I think people are jumping on that second place finish in Nest. I wrote uh, much earlier in the year that uh, Nest could be a Belmont Stakes horse. Uh, she just looks like a distance filly to me. And sure enough, she ran a big race in the Belmont. I think people are going to jump onto that. And she was actually favored over Secret Oath when Secret Oath beat her by two lengths in that uh, Kentucky Oaks in early May, of course, at Churchill Downs. And uh, she was, uh, I believe she was 2.4 to 1, and Secret Oath is 4.4 to 1. I think once again, because of the Belmont, maybe because of the Preakness, where Secret Oath was uh, only fourth, Nest will be the favorite in this race. Um, our morning line odds have Nest as a slight favorite, but I think Nest, Pletcher, Irad Ortiz, coming off that big Belmont, I think people are going to jump on Nest as the favorite. What do you think, Matt? I think it's going to be really close, but, uh, you know, the the Irad Ortiz betting factor recently um, has been overwhelming. It, it doesn't matter what kind of race um, and what horse Irad is running in, whether it's a maiden special weight for two-year-olds or a claimer or a turf race, uh, whether it's for Chad Brown or not. Uh, his horses have been taking so much action. And of course, you mentioned the Belmont Stakes and Todd Pletcher, et cetera. Um, maybe Nest will be the favorite, but uh, it's going to be the two of them, Nest and Secret Oath, uh, in the wagering, dominating the wagering. Certainly, certainly that, that's true. They're the favorite in the second choice by a long way in here. Uh, having said that, this is a, a kind of a similar to the Haskell, and I, I think there's five legitimate horses to talk about, at least, in the CCA Oaks, uh, whereas you had three real long shots in the Haskell. We don't really have three real long shots in here because the other three are all pretty recent stakes winners. Butterbean on the rail for trainer Kenny McPeak. Society, Steve Asmussen's undefeated Philly. And then Nostalgic, who won the grade three gazelle at Aqueduct a few starts back. So the other three aren't bad fillies in any uh, any means and if the top two aren't their best coming out of those tough races against the boys maybe there could be an upset from one of the three but nest and secret oath are the, are, are, are the ones to really talk about they're the leaders of the division whoever wins this race will be the leader of the three-year-old fillie division and i think the other will be second on the list i think they're the two best right now and have been the two best this year nest uh Big winner, the grade one Ashland, three starts back. Um, she never could really unwind and make that uh, uh, burst of speed in the Kentucky Oaks. Um, she was she got up to be second best in the Kentucky Oaks, but it was the turn of foot at Secret Oath that decided that Kentucky Oaks. 
And uh, in here, with a race without a lot of speed, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I don't generally love horses dropping from a mile and a half down to a mile and eighth. That's what Nest has to do in a six-week turnaround. Secret Oath, I thought, got a bad trip in the mile three sixteenth. Preakness. So I think I think that race looks a little worse on paper than it actually was. I wonder if Nest is going to be at her very best here at nine furlongs again, Matt. Yeah, we shall see if the if the distance change is is a big factor in the favorite in the favor of Secret Oath. Um, it's interesting that that you know four of these horses at various times have been able to string together three wins in a row. Um, uh, showing how they've been in good form society is currently three for three with a, a, a stakes win in a minor stake at churchill downs most recently butterbeans won her last three races in a row the iowa oaks and another race out in uh, prairie meadows and a maiden special weight at uh, uh, churchill downs nest uh won the Ashland and a couple races before that and, and secret oath had three in a row at Oak Lawn Park. So, um, you know, they're all good horses, Bry. Yeah. And nostalgic one too. Very nice races in a row before the Kentucky Oaks. And maybe she had a little trouble in there for trainer Bill Mott. So nostalgic could be better than she showed in the Kentucky Oaks. On the other hand, uh, she's raced against Ness twice and didn't have any luck and secret oath once. Um, yeah, Society, you mentioned the Asmussen undefeated Philly three for three. I think she is the speed of the race. I, I don't see a difference between Secret Oath and Nest as far as where they want to be early. What, what I do see, and maybe I'm looking back to, oh, I don't know, Matt, uh, 33 years ago when Sunday Silence and Easy Goer used to go at it, and it was that quick speed that Sunday Silence showed. I, I think most people thought Easy Goer was the better horse during those four races, but uh, it was that quick speed, that quick burst of speed that Sunday Silence had that that beat Easy Goer in three of the four races. I'm thinking that could happen here again because I think Secret Oath has it. I've seen all of her races now, and she's got that move where she can just quickly take over a race. And, and, I, and I like that, frankly, in this nine furlong coaching club American Oaks. Yeah, and, and I think it's important that you brought that up and remember back to a number of times when we, when we talked about it on Horse Center and we looked at re replays of that uh, really impressive turn of foot that uh, Secret Oath displayed when she swung into the stretch at the top of the stretch. She, when when asked, she just moved, took the lead, and, and dominated a race. Yeah, and she's dominated Phillies in her last four starts, only losing to males in that Arkansas Derby in the Preakness. Nest is an awfully tough competitor, though, Matt, and that's a uh, very interesting race for me. The Coaching Club American Oaks, which will be a little bit earlier in the afternoon because of, of the small field. It's race five at Saratoga, uh, about 3.15, so uh, more than two hours before the big one at Monmouth. Matt, are you ready to uh, to come with your picks, come with your top picks here in these two races? We can start in Jersey if you'd like. Yeah, let's go. You're first, my friend. Okay. Who do you like in the Haskell? You know, Brian, um, I think that uh, Jack Christopher could be a special horse. And I don't think that we could say that about any of the others that we talked about. They're really nice horses, Brian, but they're not going to be special horses. And if Jack Christopher can keep showing that special stuff in the Haskell, that would be exciting to see. And if he does that, he's going to be hard to pick, hard to beat. So I'm going with Jack Christopher. You're going with Jack Christopher. And I can't blame you one bit, Matt. Uh, he, yeah, he, he certainly could be special. He has been special already in his four race career. And I think he is special. It's just a matter of whether he's special at two turns yep. as well as one turn, because I think he already has proven himself special at one turn and, and certainly could be uh, any kind moving forward. Maybe he'll like a distance even more as he matures. But here right now, I don't, you know, even money, I, I don't really want to jump on the Jack Christopher uh, betting train here in the Haskell because those odds are a little bit low for me. I respect the horses coming out of the Kentucky Derby. Taiba could still be special. I'm not on the Taiba train either, though, especially all things considered uh, coming out of the Kentucky Derby.
Derby as his third career race, the layoff coming coming east. Um, Cyberknife and White Abario are, are both potential upbetters in here, I think. Of the two, I like the draw for White Abario better, drawn to the outside, Cyberknife drawn on the rail. I also like the jockey change, Matt. Uh, Joel Rosario is jumping on White Abario. I, I think he might be able to sit in fifth early. Uh, sit uh, and kind of watch the horses from the outside and, and maybe make a move a little bit later than he has in his career. I think he's six to one or higher because I think the top two are going to get pounded. So my top pick is White Barrio. Let's move to the Phillies, Matt. I, I love these two Phillies. I love one more than others slightly. So I think people know who my top pick is going to be. I, I, I'm on the secret oath train the bandwagon for sure I, th I think a nine furlong she beats nest if this was the 10 furlong alabama i would really have to uh think long and hard whether my affection for secret oath could make me pick her over nest but i think she's the second choice in here i like her chances at nine furlong she'll be my top pick in the cca oaks how about you Hey, Brian, I think these are two terrific fillies also. Uh, um, you know how much I like Secret Oath, and, and and I certainly won't be upset if Secret Oath wins the race, but I'm going to go with Nest and Todd Pletcher. Okay. All right. So we're on two different horses in, in each race. I think you're a little more chalky than me, but uh, I think one of us are going to win the CCA Oaks for sure. You're on the horse to beat in the Haskell, Jack Christopher, undefeated Jack Christopher. I'm going to try for some odds with White of Barrio to make a little bit of a rally for Joel Rosario. Matt, I'm going to throw this out there, too. I, I think the two Phillies, it's a little hard to say because of Jack Christopher's potential and the fact that he's never been farther than a mile, but I think the two Phillies would fit in the Haskell. That's how good they are. Yeah, that certainly could be. All right. Well said. Short and sweet. How about a parting shot from you, my friend? Hey, another big weekend of racing. As I said, I will be at Monmouth Park and out and about. If you see me on the grounds, please say hello. I uh, uh, I like it's great when I get to meet uh, you, Horse Center fans. And of course, thanks for watching the show. Now, when you greet all of those Horse Center fans at Monmouth Park, will you be shaking hands? Signing autographs or fist bumping? Any of the above. Wow. There you go, folks. Thank you for watching the show. You are what makes the show. We appreciate you watching each and every week. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do so now. We appreciate it. We also appreciate our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Thanks to Candace Curtis, our friend Candace Curtis in the Louisville office for providing the race graphics. Matt, next week uh, we'll be, I know we'll be talking about the Jim Dandy because have you seen the perspective field for that Jim Dandy yet? I have, Brian, and it's gonna be a dandy field. <laughs> it's gonna be a dandy epicenter, early voting, uh, 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 Zandon, Tawny Port, just to name a few. So we'll be talking Jim Dandy next week. But for now, good luck this weekend, folks. We'll see you next week right here on Horse Center.